You know, all the major shootings around the country bring questions about mental illness and gun control. In this final installment of our ongoing series this month, Violent Minds, Becca Hobbagger takes a look at the lessons health and law enforcement professionals have learned in the wake of all of these tragedies. And you know, Amanda, they have learned a lot, but it's also important to note that the vast majority of people with mental illness are not violent or dangerous. Meet Justice Crambeer. I don't go anywhere. I don't do anything. At age 19, he lives with his mom in Garnavillo now, but he's had other homes. Four different psych wards many times. I've been to Prairie View. I've been to jail. I've been to Fort Dodge, the rehab. Crambeer has a mental illness called a Cluster B personality disorder. I'll freak out and start just panicking about small things that I don't know why I do it, but I just do. He left Prairie View Residential Care Facility in Fayette earlier this year, saying the 24-hour inpatient care was too confining. I was getting to the point where I was getting pretty angry, and I just, I didn't want to be there anymore. I hated it. You're not around your friends. You're not around your family. You're just stuck. As someone who needs neither emergency care nor 24-hour surveillance, Crambeer is among the group of people Dr. James Potash says is falling through the cracks in Iowa's mental health care system. We need this so-called intermediate level of care kind of facility, and, and those just don't exist in anywhere near the numbers that, that they should. Potash is chair of the University of Iowa's Department of Psychiatry and has spoken publicly with Todd Pettis, University of Iowa College of Law professor, about the intersecting issues of mental illness and gun rights. People who have serious mental illnesses have a higher risk for violence than, than the average person. It's going to be a pretty serious mental illness uh, at the point, uh, to reach the point at which uh, one no longer has a constitutional right to possess the firearm. Potash says some people with mental illnesses, particularly those with schizophrenia, can have delusions that someone is trying to hurt them. What sometimes happens is they respond to that by striking first before, before in their minds they get struck or attack themselves. It's people who fall into that category, Potash says, who shouldn't have a firearm at their disposal. As important as the Supreme Court has said this right is to possess a firearm in the home for self-defense, here's the threshold uh, beyond which we are no longer comfortable uh, letting people exercise that right. That's a difficult line. It's a line, he says, the U.S. Supreme Court has left largely up to states. Dubuque Police Chief Mark Dalsing tells his officers to expect to interact with mentally ill people daily. If somebody's delusional, it can be a little more obvious, but, you know, issues involving uh, long-term depression and stress and PTSD, you know, those are the ones that are, are not as obvious. He says recognizing and treating a mental illness before it leads to violence is the best course. There comes a time when people have to become active bystanders and they just can't sit back and, you know, say it's none of my business. Um, you know, maybe that might be the only way that we're going to pre prevent some of this stuff. But once there's a diagnosis, Potash says, treatment isn't always easy to come by. Iowa in particular is, is 48th in the country in number of psychiatric beds per capita. Those are beds that I think we really need if we want to reduce the number of violent acts. And we need to continue to move in the direction of reducing the stigma that surrounds psychiatric illness. Very dangerous. A better mental health care system is necessary for people such as Crambeer. He believes a group home would be an ideal situation for him. They have staff check up on you, yet you're more independent. You can get a part-time job. You contribute to society and you feel good about yourself. Because while he says he's grateful for all his mom is doing for him, he can't help but feel he's at a dead end. In Garnavillo, Becca Hobbiger, KWWL News. You know, uh, Justice Cranberry, the young man on the screen there, he spent nearly three weeks, had to spend nearly three weeks in the Clayton County Jail last year because at the time, officials were trying to find a treatment facility with room for him and they couldn't find one and he had absolutely no criminal charges at the time filed against him. So he was stuck in jail, no place to go get treatment. Yeah. Mental health professionals say a lot of inmates in Iowa's prisons and jails are dealing with mental illnesses right now. That's right. And the Iowa Code now requires, as you know, law enforcement agencies to 
to provide their officers with training for how to deal with people with mental illnesses that they might meet on different calls as a law enforcement officer. Well, still to come on